بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد في كل لمحة المنافس بعدد كل معلم لك الحمد لله this is our fourth meeting together الحمد لله الله is very possible الحمد لله ما شاء الله So after the recital of uh, Surah Rahman and the Dhikr of Tasbih, Tahmid and Tahlil, we now would like to um, open ourselves to the uh, knowledge of Ar-Rahman. How Ar-Rahman itself uh, is the one that actually cures us, heals us, uh, that uh, covers up um, the faults that we have. Last week we spoke about um, Nur, right? How Nur, Nurullah, or Nur of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through the du'a of uh, after Surah Surah Fajr. This week, inshallah, I like to quote. Uh, I like to use speak from a text from um, Sheikh uh, Sharafuddin Manin from uh, who's from the Firdausi Tarika. So he has a collection of letters, which are very famous in um, in India. And he's from a town called Bihar. So the Firdausis are actually uh, from the Kubrawi Tarika. And very, uh, his letters are beautiful. It's been said that uh, the collection of letters were at the bedside of some of the sultans. And uh, I mean, if we look into uh, uh, traditional Islamic text uh, studies, uh, we usually only look at manuals, we look at um, how to do this, how to do that. But we uh, always leave out the importance of um, interactions of scholars and students, the discourses that they had, the, the, <coughs> the, what came out from the discourse is the creation, or the, not creation, but the molding of a student. And for us to understand our relationship with Allah, it is through understanding the relationship between a master and a student and how the master uh, heals the student by giving advices, by giving... It's a very human interaction. We have this uh, notion that master and students are on pedestal, the master is on a pedestal and the students are below. Me, I am me and you are you. It is not there is a certain amount of respect in other, but there is a lot of uh, love between the teacher and the student. One another great example is Ayyuh al Walad, Walad, you know, my dear beloved son, when Imam Al Ghazali wrote to his uh, beloved student. And there's many examples. No? One of them is the Darqawi letter, Risala to Darqawiya, where Mawlana Arbi Darqawi uh, wrote to his students. And, um, from there, you get, he, he speaks a lot about um, you know, uh, the emphasis on the lafsu jalala, zikr of Allah, you, you do not miss your sunnah. But at the same time, he has other aspects of him which are usually not portrayed. You know, it's very aesthetic at the same time. And through letters, you actually study, you learn a lot about the scholars themselves. So it's a, a way that they. Um, to let, let loose it's very personal because the reader of the letter already knows how the teacher is like so we as uh, as readers of the letters get to see another aspect of the scholars that we don't usually see these are important so today I'd like to quote from his second uh, group of letters second collection of letters and I'd like to talk uh, I'll quote some parts in here and there I like to talk, touch on the topic. Um, well, he gave the title: is, "The Sin of Men Compared to the Mercy of God or the Mercy of Allah." So <clears throat> he began with the thing: "If some drops of sin were to appear, who would see them in such an ocean?" The ocean here that he's referring to is the ocean of Allah's mercy, and he he wrote this to a certain person could be a scholar, could be a sheikh his name is Khaja Ahmed so he said Khaja Ahmed pray for greetings from the writer of these lines 
It means he wrote those lines. Sharaf Maneli. He introduced himself. He said, Study them and rest assured that the sin and disobedience of the whole world would simply be a drop in that ocean of mercy and forgiveness. You see? What would your sin and mine be in that all-embracing ocean? It has been put thus. So he says in another uh, poetry, he says, If the sins of all, from the first to the last, were to pile up in heaven and upon the earth, yet the vast dimensions of all those sins were, are all obliterated in one dwelling place. See, this, this shows how the scholar... In this book, you'll see a lot of uh, other letters where he spoke about Gwara. Uh, uh, have to be... Uh, through horror, that you have to hold on to the Sharia and all that kind of thing. But also now you see another aspect of him, where he says, "Yes, Allah is all embracing mercy would forgive you." This, this is where we talk, we understand about tashbih wa tanzih, similarity, and ta this tashbih, and tanzih is where Allah is is most great majesty. A Jalal is Sanjeeh Tashbih is Jamal So here In, under, in order to understand Tawheed One must know I'm not only talking about Tawheed In terms of Ash'ari or Maturi no. Tawheed that you live with There's enough talk about Tawheed of the text Which is fine Alhamdulillah But the Tawheed that you breathe with the tawhid that you walk with the tawhid that you see with the tawhid that you speak with the tawhid that you you interact with people with so there is a hadith could see that says my mercy precedes my wrath if you read ibn arabi he quotes a lot of this hadith my mercy precedes my wrath and here the sheikh sharafuddin yahya maneri it's it's actually in actual fact explaining the hadith. We cannot enter heaven without the mercy of Allah. So what should we be looking for is His mercy, His rahmah. And we must be very assured that His ocean of His forgiveness is bigger than any ocean. We go with that assurance. We have we have nowhere else to run to. Yes, you fear Allah, right? Right? But at the same time, you know that His mercy is bigger than His ocean. He mentions about heaven and hell and all that kind of thing. But at the same time, He mentions, we just read Al Rahman. Which one do you deny? This is the most important. So let me continue reading. Finally, there's an injunction of the law where the Prophet says, by God and by Allah in whose power is my soul if you hadn't seen the Lord would assuredly have taken you away and brought you another place another and brought another people let me say we change the people in your place who would have sinned they would have then craved forgiveness and God most exalted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have forgiven them Allah practicing his asma in the food. That doesn't mean we go around seeing no. <coughs> but it also goes to show only Allah is perfect. And I mean besides that the closest is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who has seen all the true realities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we who are on the path of trying to be close to Allah, trying to realize Allah, trying to be in the light of Allah, trying to be with his mercy must also walk with confidence, with mercy in the light of mercy I spoke about this before, Tariqatul Rahman the path of mercy this is, tas, this is Tashbih we must have that must have the full assurance of Allah's Rahman let me continue thus it is said the Shaykh continued, he said sinners sought your comprehensive forgiveness that means your forgiveness is comprehensive this is why I took hold of Sinus Square. 
when I saw your work of veiling sinners, your and Allah, with my own hands I tore away my own veil. Because he believed in the mercy. That means the veil, hijab, is gone. Since the color of the blanket I received was black, O oh, gracious one, make it as white as my hair. For me, this is a very powerful letter. Very powerful letter. Then he says, Oh brother, back to Fajr Ahmad. He says, Oh brother, a profound secret lies hidden within your sins and mine. Even Ibn Sidi Ahmad ibn Ta'ila says this in his Hikam, why we do sins and all that kind of thing. If your sins and mine didn't exist, the divine pardoning and veiling would have been revealed. Allah wants to manifest. And go like, this is so cruel. Allah makes us sin just to manifest his other food. It is not cruel. It is for us to take away the ego, the veil. Enough. Then we appreciate it. Then we become thankful. Then we become more loving. Then we become, there is the subtleties in the heart that comes out. The nur that comes out. The Rahman that comes out because you've gone through. So the sinning is not a veil because he says this. This is why I took hold of the sinner square when I saw your work of veiling sinners with my own hands. I tore away my own veil and what was black became white. Is it? Would not have been revealed. The effect of pardoning and veiling would not have been made manifest. And we over here always to our own. Oh Allah, give me the Shafa'a of the Prophet, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. Those du'as must be with certainty of Allah's mercy. That means with every du'a, there must be the ruh, the spirit of the du'a. That is within it. You me? Ar-Rahman. And then he says, All this pain and happiness people experience contains within itself a secret concerning Allah. Plumbing divine secrets is the work of the devout. How could common people know or grab it? The devout should know this. Huh? A holy man used to say that the Lord has two treasures. <coughs> what was it? One is full of merit and generosity, while the other is full of forgiveness and pardon. If a believer has been devout and refrained from committing sins, Merit and generosity are showered upon him. If he were not to sin, and no sin could have been attributed to him, then the treasury of forgiveness and pardon would remain untappable. So then there's another couple of poetry. He says, Who does not know about the way you work, you, Yani Allah, who is not afraid of your untrammeled power? If you accept us, oh, unsway us by causes. What is a handful of dust is good or ugly? What if a handful of dust is good or ugly? That's a question. Then uh, Sharafuddin, Sheikh Sharafuddin continues, he said, Oh brother, wherever there is acceptance, faults vanish. When the angel said, this is in the Quran, eh? will you put there one who would do evil? He says, in Baqarah, eh? Allah most gracious head and exalted did not reply that they would not that they would not do evil but instead I he replied I know what you do not know eh? the secrets of my divinity and yani Allah's divinity have not been made manifested to you to the angels and nor are you aware of the kindness bequeathed to men eh? from my inexhaustible being Allah's unlimited being hmm? if they are not worthy I make them worthy eh? if they are far off I bring them close if they are contemptible I make them dear you may look at their external in, 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 inequalities, but I look at their internal purity. ruhi I blow into men, mind, what is from our ruh, 
refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you rely on your own sinless state, they rely on my mercy. Of what worth is your sinless state if it is not accepted by me, Ya Allah? What harm can result from their sins when they have been erased by me? It is Allah showing His generosity. And what is the hadith that talks about this? If you walk to me, I run to you. Then the hadith continues. Huh? It's a very mashur hadith you all can hear. If you walk to me, I run to you. We erase off Allah's running, but we keep talking about our walking. Seem like those angels. Huh? Oh, we, we have been praying to you, O oh Allah. We have been this, O oh Allah. We have been that. Why do you need them? No, you are different. They are different. Why? Because of what I've put within them. The Sawuf begins with Tawbah. The initial step is Tawbah. But Tawbah from what? Tawbah from misunderstanding Allah's mercy. From misinterpreting His mercy. From limiting His mercy. The, his mercy is inexhaustible. What's up? There's so many things that talks about Allah's greatness. Yes. But we tend to say, oh, yeah. no, I, I think the angels are greater than us. Yet we respect the angels. We know that they are also those who are close to Allah, Allah's life. But at the same time, why are they made to serve us? This is important we need to know. Why do we do sins? And how Allah, despite the sins that we have done, Allah gave us even more, gave us even more, gave us even more, gave us even more. This is why we read the istighfar of Nabi Hidr alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma inni astaghfiruka lima tubtu ilayka min hu thumma alutu fihi wa astaghfiruka lima aqaituka min nafsi thumma lam ufi bihi wa ila alikhi ila akhlihi. It's a very long istighfar. Let me just continue. <coughs> We are not beggars since the king of love. By your goodness has become our king. Last night in a trance we heard a call. In Zikir, in Padra, we heard a call. In both worlds, your pain is our medicine. All these graces and favors are caresses and intimate encounters with the Lord. Our encounters with Allah. But a servant should always remain within the bond of his servitude. Be back as a servant. Only then can you get this. You must be the servant. <laughs> then can you get his mercy. He should be repenting of his sins continuously. Amen. Ah, always. It's like the Prophet who is sinless. But he still did Tawbah. He still did Tawbah. And he was sent as mercy. And he said, Stifar, 70 times a day. Some hadith says 100 times a day. In this connection, it has been related that the Apostle, any Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to beg pardon 100 times a day. This is what he says. We know that the garment of prophethood is unstained. He has no, he has no sin. For the tiniest particle of sin is not found thereon. Nevertheless, they were seeking pardon for one's devotion. And we end with this, inshallah. Don't even steal a glance of your own existence. For you won't become bright and radiant thereby. Be overwhelmed by God's threshold. Don't deceive, for humility makes a man of you along this way. For me, this is a very important letter where it talks about Tawbah but in the, in the most beautiful of way where it uplifts the person that is doing Tawbah not cutting off the Rahma that comes with Tawbah not cutting off the Rahma that the person is in any state because when we do Tawbah, usually we are in a state of what? We are in, in state of sadness, we are in sorrow, we are in worry 
Am, am I going to be accepted? No. You want to do tawbah, you must do it with confidence. Yes. Allah has already accepted my tawbah because I'm here to do tawbah. Yes, there is the process of going through uh, reconciling with people, of returning whatever. All these steps must be understood. Lah. But the thing is that it must be done, it must be done with the ruh of Rahman. So every step that you take in this process of tawbah must be coupled with ruh ar Rahman. If not, it's not going to work. <laughs> It's a two in one. It is two. It's a two in one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm 